What are the symbolic meanings of the many objects in the Marod altarpiece? The Marod altarpiece is filled with religious symbolism related to the Annunciation. On the table next to Mary are lilies in a vase. The lilies represent Mary's purity and the fact that there are three of them suggest the Holy Trinity. Next to the lilies is a candle. The candle's flame has been recently extinguished and the wick smokes gently, this is a symbol of Christ's incarnation. A small image of infant Christ holding a wooden cross can be seen in the upper left. He flies on a ray of light and has just entered the room through a closed yet unbroken window, which is a reference to Mary's virginity. In the back of the room is a small, brass basin and washcloth. Symbols of Christ who cleanses the sins of the world. In the right panel, Saint Joseph, Mary's husband, is making mousetraps. This might sound strange, but the activity symbolizes St. Joseph's role as protector of Mary and Christ and shows him as a family man. What makes the Mona Lisa such an enduring image, recognizable by millions of people around the world? The Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci between 1503 and 1507. The painting itself, oil on panel, is quite small. 30x21 inches. It is has been stolen and returned, appears to have had part of it cut away. And depicts a Florentine noblewoman against an enigmatic background. It is likely a portrait of a Florentine woman named Lisa Gerardini. Spend some time looking at the painting. At Lisa's cool expression as she stares out of the frame with her arms delicately crossed. What is stained glass? Stained glass is translucent colored glass set in a lead framework and usually used in windows. Stained glass was used in early Christian and Byzantine churches as well. But was particularly favored by Gothic architects for whom it began an important form of art. The process of making stained glass hasn't changed much in nearly a thousand years. The colors in the glass come from adding metal oxides to molten glass, a labor-intensive process. Detailed images are made by using black enamel paint and fusing it to the glass through firing. The glass artist then organizes the colored glass fragments on a flat surface. Like an enormous puzzle, until reaching the desired image and then joins the glass to lead strips and iron bands, which support the heavy glass. How did Buddhism influence Japanese art? Pure Land Buddhism Jodo in Japanese, was the primary form of Buddhism in Japan. As well as China, coming to particular prominence during the Heian period. Jodo remains the most popular type of Buddhism in Japan. 
the Amitbha Buddha, known in Japan as Amida Buddha, was an important subject in sculpture and painting, as was the concept of paradise. Esoteric Buddhism was also important in Japan, where it was called Mikya. Highly influenced by Hinduism, Esoteric Buddhism is hierarchical and features many complex deities. An important visual element of Esoteric Buddhism are mandaras, mandalas in Sanskrit. Cosmic diagrams of the universe used in ritual, meditation, and teaching. The womb world mandara from the Heian period, is one of the oldest and most well-preserved Japanese examples. The work is filled with images of gods and Buddhas, and a central image of Dainichi, the universal Buddha. Some of the gods have multiple heads and limbs. And many hold lightning bolts, which symbolize the power of the mind. What is Celadon wear? Celadon ware is a type of Korean ceramic from the Koryo period made with translucent, pigmented glazes. Usually grey, pale blue-green, and olive in tone, Celadon ware from the 11th century was known for its simplicity. While examples from the 12th century were more complex. Often inlaid or stamped with decorative elements, such as black and white pictorial scenes. Who was Michelangelo? Michelangelo Bonarotti, 1475-1564, was a multi-talented great master of the High Renaissance known for his painting, sculpture, and architecture. He had an incredibly long and successful career, active for nearly 70 years. He was 20 years younger than da Vinci and well respected during his lifetime. Though notorious for being moody and difficult to work with, he was one of the first artists in art history to be famous, two biographies were written about him and he was highly sought after by high-status patrons, including Lorenzo de' Medici and the Pope. His most famous works include his painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and his awe-inspiring sculptures such as the Pieta, which he made when he was 24 years old and the David. He also designed the dome on St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, though he died before its construction was completed. Who was Michelangelo? Michelangelo Bonarotti, 1475-1564, was a multi-talented great master of the High Renaissance known for his painting, sculpture, and architecture. He had an incredibly long and successful career, active for nearly 70 years. He was 20 years younger than da Vinci and well respected during his lifetime. Though notorious for being moody and difficult to work with, he was one of the first artists in art history to be famous, two biographies were written about him and he was highly sought after by high-status patrons, including Lorenzo de' Medici and the Pope.
His most famous works include his painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and his awe-inspiring sculptures such as the Pieta, which he made when he was 24 years old, and the David. He also designed the dome on St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, though he died before its construction was completed. How can you recognize a Michelangelo? The work of Michelangelo has a very particular style, in both painting and sculpture. Michelangelo's David is a good example of this style. Which emphasizes physical idealism of the human form, especially the male form. The David is monumental in size at 17 feet tall and was cut from an 18-foot block of white marble. David is shown at the peak of his youth, he is strong, athletic, nude, and flexing his muscles as he prepares for battle with his enemy, Goliath. His hands and feet are both oversized and highly realistic. The veins and ligaments of the hands are clearly visible even from afar. One knee is slightly bent and the hips tilt to one side the traditional. Contraposto pose which adds a sense of life and realism to the sculpture. Many of Michelangelo's other works also emphasize physical perfection and include large figures with broad shoulders, flexed muscles, and serious faces. How can you recognize a Michelangelo? The work of Michelangelo has a very particular style, in both painting and sculpture. Michelangelo's David is a good example of this style, which emphasizes physical idealism of the human form, especially the male form. The David is monumental in size at 17 feet tall and was cut from an 18-foot block of white marble. David is shown at the peak of his youth, he is strong, athletic, nude, and flexing his muscles as he prepares for battle with his enemy, Goliath. His hands and feet are both oversized and highly realistic. The veins and ligaments of the hands are clearly visible even from afar. One knee is slightly bent and the hips tilt to one side the traditional. Contraposto pose which adds a sense of life and realism to the sculpture. Many of Michelangelo's other works also emphasize physical perfection and Include large figures with broad shoulders, flexed muscles, and serious faces. What is the Sistine Chapel? In a letter to a friend in 1508, Michelangelo admitted that he disliked painting and really didn't want to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, now one of the most famous ceilings in the world. It is located in the Vatican, the official residence of the Pope in Rome. The Sistine Chapel, named after Pope Sixtus IV was designed to be the same size as the Temple of Solomon and was built between 1475 and 1481. The interior 
of the chapel is covered in frescoes depicting Christian subjects and themes. Pope Julius II personally asked for Michelangelo to paint the ceiling frescoes. And after he reluctantly accepted. Rumor also has it that the artist shut himself up in the chapel for four years, refusing to let anyone else in. That part of the story is very unlikely, Michelangelo would have needed the support of his workshop apprentices to complete the project in four years. Michelangelo did not paint the walls of the Sistine Chapel. That work was completed by other artists such as Sandro Botticelli and Domenico Gerlandeo, Michelangelo's former master. The wall frescoes visually narrate scenes from the Bible, including the story of Moses and the life of Christ. On the ceiling, Michelangelo depicted numerous Old Testament scenes including David and Goliath, the creation of Adam, the fall from Paradise, and Judith and Holofernes. With hundreds of figures in multiple poses, various different scenes, plants, nature, and illusionistic architectural elements, it's a wonder the Sistine Chapel isn't a sensory overload. But Michelangelo was able to infuse the entire 45x128 foot space with a sense of grace, calm, and awe. What is the Sistine Chapel? In a letter to a friend in 1508, Michelangelo admitted that he disliked painting and really didn't want to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, now one of the most famous ceilings in the world. It is located in the Vatican, the official residence of the Pope in Rome. The Sistine Chapel, named after Pope Sixtus IV was designed to be the same size as the Temple of Solomon and was built between 1475 and 1481. The interior of the chapel is covered in frescoes depicting Christian subjects and themes. Pope Julius II personally asked for Michelangelo to paint the ceiling frescoes. And after he reluctantly accepted, Rumor also has it that the artist shut himself up in the chapel for four years, refusing to let anyone else in. That part of the story is very unlikely, Michelangelo would have needed the support of his workshop apprentices to complete the project in four years. Michelangelo did not paint the walls of the Sistine Chapel. That work was completed by other artists such as Sandro Botticelli and Domenico Gerlandeo, Michelangelo's former master. The wall frescoes visually narrate scenes from the Bible, including the story of Moses and the life of Christ. On the ceiling, Michelangelo depicted numerous Old Testament scenes including David and Goliath, the creation of Adam, the fall from Paradise, and Judith, and Holofernes. With hundreds of figures in multiple poses, various different scenes, plants, nature, and illusionistic architectural elements, it's a wonder the Sistine Chapel isn't a sensory overload. But Michelangelo was able to infuse the entire 45x128 foot space with a sense of grace, calm, and awe.
What is the creation of Adam? The creation of Adam is the most famous of Michelangelo's frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Adam is seen nude, reclining on a patch of bare terrain while God the Father approaches from the air. Accompanied by angels and cherubs. God is shown with long, gray hair and a flowing beard, which are blown back by the wind. A red cape swirls around the figures and God's hand reaches out. Toward Adam with one finger outstretched, delivering the spark of life. Adam seems to move slightly towards God. Though his wrist is limp and his head lolls to one side he is not yet fully alive. Their fingers appear mere centimeters apart, eliciting tension and drama. This is one of the most iconic images in all of art history. Michelangelo has captured the seconds immediately before God awakens Adam to life. The creation of Adam is both delicate and powerful, poised and energized. What is the creation of Adam? The creation of Adam is the most famous of Michelangelo's frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Adam is seen nude, reclining on a patch of bare terrain while God the Father approaches from the air. Accompanied by angels and cherubs. God is shown with long, gray hair and a flowing beard, which are blown back by the wind. A red cape swirls around the figures and God's hand reaches out. Toward Adam with one finger outstretched, delivering the spark of life. Adam seems to move slightly towards God. Though his wrist is limp and his head lolls to one side he is not yet fully alive. Their fingers appear mere centimeters apart, eliciting tension and drama. This is one of the most iconic images in all of art history. Michelangelo has captured the seconds immediately before God awakens Adam to life. The creation of Adam is both delicate and powerful, poised and energized. Who was Raphael? Raphael, 1438-1520 Was 31 years younger than Leonardo da Vinci and 8 years younger than Michelangelo. Very aware of their status and their skill. Raphael made his own place in this pantheon of high renaissance artists. Whereas Michelangelo was moody and difficult to work with. Raphael was friendly, personable, and well organized. His paintings are characterized by a sweetness and harmony that has been frequently imitated. But rarely, if ever, equaled. Raphael studied in Perugia and had a successful career first in Florence. And then later in Rome where he was commissioned by Pope Julius II to decorate the Vatican apartments. His most famous works include his Vatican fresco, The School of Athens. 1510-1511, and his paintings of the Virgin and Child such as Madonna of the Meadow. 
which also includes an image of the infant Saint John the Baptist. He painted one major mythological scene. Galatea, in 1512, as well as an influential portrait of Pope Julius II the same year. After the death of Bramante, he was called on as the architect of St. Peter's, though most of his designs were either never constructed, or were changed. Raphael died at age 37 and was buried in the Pantheon in Rome. Why was St. Who was Raphael? Raphael, 1438-1520 Was 31 years younger than Leonardo da Vinci and 8 years younger than Michelangelo. Very aware of their status and their skill. Raphael made his own place in this pantheon of high Renaissance artists. Whereas Michelangelo was moody and difficult to work with. Raphael was friendly, personable, and well organized. His paintings are characterized by a sweetness and harmony that has been frequently imitated. But rarely, if ever, equaled. Raphael studied in Perugia and had a successful career first in Florence. And then later in Rome where he was commissioned by Pope Julius II to decorate the Vatican apartments. His most famous works include his Vatican fresco, The School of Athens. 1510-1511, and his paintings of the Virgin and Child such as Madonna of the Meadow which also includes an image of the infant Saint John the Baptist. He painted one major mythological scene. Galatea, in 1512, as well as an influential portrait of Pope Julius II the same year. After the death of Bramante, he was called on as the architect of St. Peter's, though most of his designs were either never constructed, or were changed. Raphael died at age 37 and was buried in the Pantheon in Rome. Why was St. Why is the tiny Tempietto an important example of High Renaissance architecture? The Tempieto is a small, circular church, officially called the Church of San Pietro in Mont Orio, Rome. It was designed around 1502 by Donato Bramante. A famed architect from Urbino who was later hired to design St. Peter's Cathedral. Tempieto means little temple and its style is reminiscent of an ancient pagan temple. It was built over what is believed to be the site of St. Peter's crucifixion and housed relics associated with the Apostle. Bramante's design was very much in tune with classical. Aesthetics popular during the Renaissance, especially in Italy. The architectural elements are mathematically proportioned and the overall style is unified. Making the building almost like a work of sculpture. The simplicity of the exterior, along with the use of classical columns, a dome. And hemispherical entablature, inspired many other building projects in Rome. Though small, the Tempieto is one of the most significant. 
Examples of High Renaissance Architecture in Italy Why is the tiny Tempietto an important example of High Renaissance Architecture? The Tempietto is a small, circular church, officially called the Church of San Pietro in Monte Orio, Rome. It was designed around 1502 by Donato Bramante. A famed architect from Urbino who was later hired to design St. Peter's Cathedral. Tempietto means Little temple and its style is reminiscent of an ancient pagan temple. It was built over what is believed to be the site of St. Peter's crucifixion and housed relics associated with the Apostle. Bramante's design was very much in tune with classical. Aesthetics popular during the Renaissance, especially in Italy. The architectural elements are mathematically proportioned and the overall style is unified. Making the building almost like a work of sculpture. The simplicity of the exterior, along with the use of classical columns, a dome. And hemispherical entablature, inspired many other building projects in Rome. Though small, the Tempietto is one of the most significant. Examples of High Renaissance Architecture in Italy What are the hallmarks of the Venetian Renaissance? During the Renaissance, the Republic of Venice was one of the most powerful city-states in Italy. Geographically and culturally removed from cities such as Rome and Florence, which were much further south, art in Venice was greatly inspired by Northern Europe and the East, including Islamic and Persian styles from the Ottoman Empire, formerly the Byzantine Empire. The climate in Venice was also different from other Italian cities. As the city itself was mostly water, Venice is essentially a series of islands connected by canals. It was too humid for fresco painting. Venetian painters preferred to work in oil paint, using bold colors such as deep reds, blues and golds inspired by the East. Venetian artists also continued to make intricate mosaics in the Byzantine style. And the city's architecture featured arches and domes more reminiscent of the East than the rest of Italy. What are the hallmarks of the Venetian Renaissance? During the Renaissance, the Republic of Venice was one of the most powerful city-states in Italy. Geographically and culturally removed from cities such as Rome and Florence, which were much further south, art in Venice was greatly inspired by Northern Europe and the East, including Islamic and Persian styles from the Ottoman Empire, formerly the Byzantine Empire. The climate in Venice was also different from other Italian cities. As the city itself was mostly water, Venice is essentially a series of islands connected by canals. It was too humid for fresco painting. 
Venetian painters preferred to work in oil paint, using bold colors such as deep reds, blues, and golds inspired by the East. Venetian artists also continued to make intricate mosaics in the Byzantine style. And the city's architecture featured arches and domes more reminiscent of the East than the rest of Italy. Who were the Bellini brothers? Gentile and Giovanni Bellini, members of a highly regarded family of artists, were among the most influential Venetian artists during the Renaissance. Andrea Montaigne, another famous Venetian painter, was their brother-in-law. Gentile Bellini, c. 1430-1507, received many high-status commissions from the city of Venice. Including decorative work on the Doge's palace, though most of his art has been lost. One painting that has survived is his portrait of Sultan Mehmed II, which he painted as a court painter in Constantinople. His work there highlights the ties between the two cities. Giovanni Bellini, c. 1430-1517, is slightly more famous than his brother, and is regarded by some scholars the one of the most important artists of the Venetian Renaissance. He is known for his abilities to manipulate color, space, and form and completed important Christian-themed works on a monumental scale. In 1478 he painted Virgin and Child enthroned with Saints Francis, John the Baptist, Job, Dominic, Sebastian, and Louis of Toulouse for the chapel of the Hospital of San Job. In this work, Giovanni Bellini masterfully creates the illusion of three-dimensional space as the Madonna and child sit enthroned within a vaulted apse decorated with Byzantine-inspired paintings and mosaics. Bellini is clearly a master of perspectival techniques, such as foreshortening, and creates a realistic architectural space with rich colors, and attention to detail on PAR with Northern European masters. The golds, reds, and blues, along with the ornate decoration and use of light, reflect the aesthetic values of the Venetian Renaissance. Who were the Bellini brothers? Gentile and Giovanni Bellini, members of a highly regarded family of artists, were among the most influential Venetian artists during the Renaissance. Andrea Montaigne, another famous Venetian painter, was their brother-in-law. Gentile Bellini, c. 1430-1507, received many high-status commissions from the city of Venice, including decorative work on the Doge's palace, though most of his art has been lost. One painting that has survived is his portrait of Sultan Mehmed II, which he painted as a court painter in Constantinople. His work there highlights the ties between the two cities. Giovanni Bellini, C. 1430 to 1517 is slightly more famous than his brother and is regarded by some scholars the one of the most important artists of the Venetian Renaissance. He is known for his abilities to manipulate color, space, 
and form and completed important Christian-themed works on a monumental scale. In 1478 he painted Virgin and Child enthroned with Saints Francis, John the Baptist, Job. Dominic, Sebastian, and Louis of Toulouse for the chapel of the Hospital of Sanjab. In this work, Giovanni Bellini masterfully creates the illusion of three-dimensional space as the Madonna. And child sit enthroned within a vaulted apse decorated with Byzantine-inspired paintings and mosaics. Bellini is clearly a master of perspectival techniques, such as foreshortening, and creates a realistic architectural space with rich colors, and attention to detail on par with Northern European masters. The golds, reds, and blues, along with the ornate decoration and use of light, reflect the aesthetic values of the Venetian Renaissance. Who was Giorgione? Very little is known about the Venetian painter Giorgion. He was born in 1478 in the northern Italian town, Castelfranco. Was a student under Giovanni Bellini, and died of the plague in 1510. He was an innovative painter credited with ushering in the High Renaissance in Venice. He emphasized landscape in his work, which was popular in Venice at the time, and rendered both landscapes and portraits meaningful through the extensive use of symbolism. According to the writer Vasari, Giorgione was inspired by the sfumato technique used by Leonardo da Vinci, and preferred to draw directly on the canvas, rather than do preparatory drawings on paper. Attributing specific paintings to Giorgione is extremely difficult. And scholars have only confirmed five paintings as being from his hand. His most famous surviving painting, The Tempest, is of a forested landscape with a lightning storm in the background. A breastfeeding woman sits partially covered by some vegetation, while a red jacketed solitaire watches her from afar. The mysterious painting enthralls scholars and other viewers, who continue to wonder at its meaning. Who was Giorgione? Very little is known about the Venetian painter Giorgione. He was born in 1478 in the northern Italian town, Castelfranco. Was a student under Giovanni Bellini, and died of the plague in 1510. He was an innovative painter credited with ushering in the High Renaissance in Venice. He emphasized landscape in his work, which was popular in Venice at the time, and rendered both landscapes and portraits meaningful through the extensive use of symbolism. According to the writer Vasari, Giorgione was inspired by the sfumato technique used by Leonardo da Vinci, and preferred to draw directly on the canvas, rather than do preparatory drawings on paper. Attributing specific paintings to Giorgione is extremely difficult. And scholars have only confirmed five paintings as being from his hand. His most famous surviving painting, The Tempest, 
is of a forested landscape with a lightning storm in the background. A breastfeeding woman sits partially covered by some vegetation. While a red jacketed solitaire watches her from afar. The mysterious painting enthralls scholars and other viewers, who continue to wonder at its meaning. Who is Titian? Titian is the nickname of Tiziano Vecalio, who started his career as Jurgen's assistant and went on to become the official painter to the Republic of Venice. Titian essentially picked up where Jurgen left off after his early death and worked on a number of paintings attributed by some to Jurgen. Titian was a highly regarded painter during his long life and was even praised by Charles V. The Holy Roman Emperor, who wanted only Titian to paint his portrait. Titian worked in oil, and was known to finely grind his pigments. And apply many layers of glaze to the surface of his canvas. As a result, Titian's paintings are nearly unparalleled in their vibrancy and color. Who is Titian? Titian is the nickname of Tiziano Vecalio, who started his career as Jurgen's assistant and went on to become the official painter to the Republic of Venice. Titian essentially picked up where Jurgen left off after his early death and worked on a number of paintings attributed by some to Jurgen. Titian was a highly regarded painter during his long life and was even praised by Charles V. The Holy Roman Emperor, who wanted only Titian to paint his portrait. Titian worked in oil, and was known to finely grind his pigments. And apply many layers of glaze to the surface of his canvas. As a result, Titian's paintings are nearly unparalleled in their vibrancy and color. What is the Venus of Urbino? Titian painted the Venus of Urbino for Guido Baldo della Rovera. The Duke of Urbino, in 1538. The painting is unabashedly erotic. Depicting a nude woman reclining on a disheveled white sheet covering deep red cushions. Her long, red hair sweeps around her neck and her hand rests gently along her hips. Only partially covering her sex. She stares teasingly from within the frame, a tiny dog curled near her feet. In the background of the painting, two women appear to be rifling through a chest, collecting clothing. There is no question, Titian has created a goddess. The provocative painting, part of a long tradition of female nudes in the history of art. Influenced artists even hundreds of years later. Manet's similarly bold, Olympia, 1863, would not exist without the Venus of Urbino. What is the Venus of Urbino?
Titian painted the Venus of Urbino for Guido Baldo della Rovera. The Duke of Urbino, in 1538. The painting is unabashedly erotic. Depicting a nude woman reclining on a disheveled white sheet covering deep red cushions. Her long, red hair sweeps around her neck and her hand rests gently along her hips. Only partially covering her sex. She stares teasingly from within the frame, a tiny dog curled near her feet. In the background of the painting, two women appear to be rifling through a chest, collecting clothing. There is no question, Titian has created a goddess. The provocative painting, part of a long tradition of female nudes in the history of art. Influenced artists even hundreds of years later. Manet's similarly bold, Olympia, 1863, would not exist without the Venus of Urbino. Why did Veronese get into so much trouble? Veronese 1528-1588, was the nickname of Paolo Cagliari. A painter from Verona who made his career in Venice during the second half of the 16th century. Many of his paintings celebrate the ornate architecture of the city and the well-heeled lives of its nobility. His seemingly harmless painting, Feast in the House of Levi, however, got him into trouble with the Catholic Inquisition. The painting was originally called The Last Supper, with Christ depicted in the center of a large, ornate hall, dining with a rather rambunctious crowd. The enormous painting, which is 18 feet tall and 42 feet long, Included images of drunkards, a man with a bloody nose, cats, dogs, parrots, dwarves, and Germans all of which the Inquisition found unacceptable in a painting of such a holy scene. Why did Veronese get into so much trouble? Veronese, 1528-1588, was the nickname of Paolo Cagliari. A painter from Verona who made his career in Venice during the second half of the 16th century. Many of his paintings celebrate the ornate architecture of the city and the well-heeled lives of its nobility. His seemingly harmless painting, Feast in the House of Levi, however, got him into trouble with the Catholic Inquisition. The painting was originally called The Last Supper, with Christ depicted in the center of a large, ornate hall, dining with a rather rambunctious crowd. The enormous painting, which is 18 feet tall and 42 feet long, Included images of drunkards, a man with a bloody nose, cats, dogs, parrots, dwarves, and Germans all of which the Inquisition found unacceptable in a painting of such a holy scene. What is the creation of Adam?
The Creation of Adam is the most famous of Michelangelo's frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Adam is seen nude, reclining on a patch of bare terrain while God the Father approaches from the air, accompanied by angels and cherubs. God is shown with long, gray hair and a flowing beard, which are blown back by the wind. A red cape swirls around the figures and God's hand reaches out toward Adam with one finger outstretched, delivering the spark of life. Adam seems to move slightly towards God. Though his wrist is limp and his head lolls to one side he is not yet fully alive. Their fingers appear mere centimeters apart, eliciting tension and drama. This is one of the most iconic images in all of art history. Michelangelo has captured the seconds immediately before God awakens Adam to life. The creation of Adam is both delicate and powerful, poised and energized. What is Masacho's Trinita? Known by his nickname, Masaccio, lengthily named Tommaso di Ser Giovanni di Moncasi was an early Renaissance painter whose work blended the realism of Giotto with the concepts of perspective established by Bruno Lesci. His monumental fresco, Trinity with the Virgin, St. John the Evangelist and donors was painted in the church of Santa Maria Novella around 1426. This illusionistic fresco appears to be a three-dimensional niche in the wall in which Christ, impaled on the crucifix, hangs above an altar. Framed by painted pilasters in the classical order and a barrel vaulted ceiling, the pale, Emaciated Christ is frail yet powerful. God the Father, depicted in the form of a man, towers over him from behind while a white dove, symbol of the Holy Spirit, floats just above Christ's halo. Somber representations of the Virgin Mary in blue, and St. John the Evangelist in red draw the viewer's attention to the plight of Christ. While outside the sacred arched space occupied by the saints the patrons kneel in prayer. Just below the scene is the image of an entombed skeleton with the proclamation, What you are. I once was. What I am, you will be. The realism of the figures and the use of single point. Perspective effectively tricked the eye into imagining that these figures are present within the confines of Santa Maria Novella, sending a powerful message of the importance of salvation. How is the Italian Renaissance different from the Renaissance in Northern Europe? The Renaissance is said to have started in Italy and spread slowly north into the rest of Europe. This is not quite true, however. While the Italians were especially interested in classical art, they lived amongst Roman ruins after all. Artists from northern European countries such as France, Germany and the Netherlands had different interests. While artists of the Italian Renaissance were interested in the idealized nude classical architecture and single point perspective, 
Northern European painting of the time is characterized by intense realism and attention to detail. Northern artists were interested in the material quality of objects in the visible world. Important artists of the Northern Renaissance include Jan van Eyck, Roger van der Weyden, and Klaus Luther. What is the Sistine Chapel? In a letter to a friend in 1508, Michelangelo admitted that he disliked painting and really didn't want to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, now one of the most famous ceilings in the world. It is located in the Vatican, the official residence of the Pope in Rome. The Sistine Chapel, named after Pope Sixtus IV, was designed to be the same size as the Temple of Solomon and was built between 1475 and 1481. The interior of the chapel is covered in frescoes depicting Christian subjects and themes. Pope Julius II personally asked for Michelangelo to paint the ceiling frescoes. And after he reluctantly accepted, Rumor also has it that the artist shut himself up in the chapel for four years, refusing to let anyone else in. That part of the story is very unlikely, Michelangelo would have needed the support of his workshop apprentices to complete the project in four years. Michelangelo did not paint the walls of the Sistine Chapel. That work was completed by other artists such as Sandro Botticelli and Domenico Gerlandeo, Michelangelo's former master. The wall frescoes visually narrate scenes from the Bible, including the story of Moses and the life of Christ. On the ceiling, Michelangelo depicted numerous Old Testament scenes including David and Goliath, the creation of Adam, the fall from Paradise, and Judith and Holofernes. With hundreds of figures in multiple poses, various different scenes, plants, nature, and illusionistic architectural elements, it's a wonder the Sistine Chapel isn't a sensory overload. But Michelangelo was able to infuse the entire 45x128 foot space with a sense of grace, calm, and awe. Who was Giorgione? Very little is known about the Venetian painter Georgian. He was born in 1478 in the northern Italian town, Castelfranco. Was a student under Giovanni Bellini, and died of the plague in 1510. He was an innovative painter credited with ushering in the High Renaissance in Venice. He emphasized landscape in his work, which was popular in Venice at the time, and rendered both landscapes and portraits meaningful through the extensive use of symbolism. According to the writer Vasari, Georgian was inspired by the sfumato technique used by Leonardo da Vinci, and preferred to draw directly on the canvas, rather than do preparatory drawings on paper. Attributing specific paintings to Georgian is extremely difficult. And scholars have only confirmed five paintings as being from his hand. 
his most famous surviving painting, The Tempest, is of a forested landscape with a lightning storm in the background. A breastfeeding woman sits partially covered by some vegetation. While a red jacketed solitaire watches her from afar. The mysterious painting enthralls scholars and other viewers, who continue to wonder at its meaning. What is pre Columbian art? Pre-Columbian art is a broad term given to the art of Mesoamerica, which includes Mexico and Central America, and South America before the arrival of Christopher Columbus. In 1492, it includes the art of large cultures such as the Maya, Aztecs, and Inca. Who was Michelangelo? Michelangelo Bonarotti, 1475-1564, was a multi-talented great master of the High Renaissance known for his painting, sculpture, and architecture. He had an incredibly long and successful career, active for nearly 70 years. He was 20 years younger than da Vinci and well respected during his lifetime. Though notorious for being moody and difficult to work with, he was one of the first artists in art history to be famous, two biographies were written about. Him and he was highly sought after by high-status patrons, including Lorenzo de' Medici and the Pope. His most famous works include his painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and his awe-inspiring sculptures such as the Pieta, which he made when he was 24 years old, and the David. He also designed the dome on St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, though he died before its construction was completed. What is the Venus of Urbino? Titian painted the Venus of Urbino for Guido Baldo della Rovera. The Duke of Urbino, in 1538. The painting is unabashedly erotic. Depicting a nude woman reclining on a disheveled white sheet covering deep red cushions. Her long, red hair sweeps around her neck and her hand rests gently along her hips. Only partially covering her sex. She stares teasingly from within the frame, a tiny dog curled near her feet. In the background of the painting, two women appear to be rifling through a chest, collecting clothing. There is no question, Titian has created a goddess. The provocative painting, part of a long tradition of female nudes in the history of art. Influenced artists even hundreds of years later. Manet's similarly bold, Olympia, 1863, would not exist without the Venus of Urbino. How can you recognize a Michelangelo? The work of Michelangelo has a very particular style, in both painting and sculpture. 
Michelangelo's David is a good example of this style. Which emphasizes physical idealism of the human form, especially the male form. The David is monumental in size at 17 feet tall. And was cut from an 18 foot block of white marble. David is shown at the peak of his youth, he is strong, athletic, nude. And flexing his muscles as he prepares for battle with his enemy, Goliath. His hands and feet are both oversized and highly realistic. The veins and ligaments of the hands are clearly visible even from afar. One knee is slightly bent and the hips tilt to one side the traditional. Contraposto pose which adds a sense of life and realism to the sculpture. Many of Michelangelo's other works also emphasize physical perfection and include large figures with broad shoulders, flexed muscles, and serious faces. Why did Veronese get into so much trouble? Veronese, 1528-1588, was the nickname of Paolo Colaieri. A painter from Verona who made his career in Venice during the second half of the 16th century. Many of his paintings celebrate the ornate architecture of the city and the well-heeled lives of its nobility. His seemingly harmless painting, Feast in the House of Levi, however, got him into trouble with the Catholic Inquisition. The painting was originally called The Last Supper, with Christ depicted in the center of a large ornate hall, dining with a rather rambunctious crowd. The enormous painting, which is 18 feet tall and 42 feet long, included images of drunkards, a man with a bloody nose, cats, dogs, parrots, dwarves, and Germans all of which the Inquisition found unacceptable in a painting of such a holy scene. What is the portrait of Lord Packle? Lord Packle was a powerful Mayan ruler from the ancient city of Palenque. In modern-day Chiapas in Mexico, between 615 and 683 c. E. Lord Packle and his descendants commissioned a great deal of monumental art and architecture in this Mayan capital. At his death, Lord Packle was laid to rest in a sarcophagus. In his tomb archaeologists found a portrait of the ruler as a young man with a crown of jade and flowers. He is thought to be represented according to Mayan ideals of beauty. Which emphasize a long, sloping face and skull, and full lips. Traces of red paint indicate that the piece used to be painted, as was most Mayan sculpture. What is the significance of ball playing in Mesoamerica? Ball games were popular throughout Mesoamerica. And art depicting ball games exists in many Mesoamerican cultures including the Almec, Maya, and Aztec. 
Archaeologists have even discovered the ruins of sunken Almec ball courts. Not much is known about the specific rules of the game. Mayan art depicts ball players wearing protective padding. And other art shows players wearing helmets and even leather belts. It is important to note that the game wasn't just for fun it had. A serious religious significance for those who played and watched. It is possible that some ball players were forced to participate. Against their will and that human sacrifice played a role in the game. According to Mayan mythology, ball games were symbolic of the cycle of life, death, and regeneration. How did Brunelleschi build the dome of the Florence Cathedral? As civic projects boomed in the wealthy city of Florence, architects imagined building a huge dome on top of the Florence Cathedral as a way of glorifying their city. Though he had lost the Baptista e Doors design competition earlier, Filippo Brunelleschi was hired to build the dome, which needed to be 138 feet across, bigger than the Pantheon in Rome. It was not an easy task and Brunelleschi was only 24 years old at the time. After studying Roman ruins, including the Pantheon, Brunelleschi built an octagonal double-shell dome. The inner layer of bricks was arranged in ever-tapering circular rows, which allowed each row of bricks to support the next. The bricks of the outer shell were arranged in a strong herring bone pattern. The eight sides of the dome were further supported by ribs and metal bands. Bruno Leschi faced another significant challenge, how were the workers going to build this thing? Usually, a dome would be constructed with the aid of scaffolding. But the space to be covered was so big that no trees were long enough. Instead, Bruno Leschi devised a system of smaller scaffolds and platforms for workers. Along with hoisting systems, and even elevated canteens so that workers could take their lunch break without climbing back down to the ground. It is no wonder that Bruno Leschi is considered to be the father of Renaissance architecture. What is the international Gothic style of painting? International Gothic is a term used to describe a highly stylized form of painting popular in Europe between the late 14th century and early 15th century which greatly influenced the art of the Northern Renaissance. It is most closely associated with the art of Bohemia, France, and the Holy Roman Empire. International Gothic styles were less popular in Italy, especially Southern Italy. Paintings done in the International Gothic style feature graceful. Elongated figures and extensive use of lines. While flat compared to art of the Italian Renaissance, international Gothic paintings do feature more realistic details. Some use of perspective, and an emphasis on setting and landscape. How was single-point perspective invented?
quite literally a renaissance man, Filippo Brunelleschi was a goldsmith. Clockmaker, mathematician, Latin scholar, and architect. It just so happens that he also invented single-point perspective. One of the most important technical innovations of the Renaissance. Also known as linear perspective. Single-point perspective is a mathematical system based on natural observation. Under the rules of single-point perspective, distant objects are depicted smaller than objects closer to the viewer. While the far edges of similarly shaped objects appear shorter near the edges. This warping of forms is known as foreshortening. Bruno Lesci invented the idea of a picture plane, in which he imagined the frame of a painting as a window through which the viewer sees an illusion of three-dimensional space. The artist lays out the scene according to a grid pattern, and every object in the picture. For example architectural objects like roof lines and walls, follow invisible lines called orthogonals which converge at a single point, known as the vanishing point, usually at eye level to the viewer. Strangely enough, Bruno Lesci was primarily interested in perspective not as a painter, but as an architect. His goal was to design an interior that drew a person's attention through a space, such as a church nave. Towards the altar, which he did effectively in his design for the Santo Spirito in Florence in 1434. Who was Raphael? Raphael 1438 to 1520 was 31 years younger than Leonardo da Vinci and 8 years younger than Michelangelo. Very aware of their status and their skill. Raphael made his own place in this pantheon of high Renaissance artists. Whereas Michelangelo was moody and difficult to work with. Raphael was friendly, personable, and well-organized. His paintings are characterized by a sweetness and harmony that has been frequently imitated. But rarely, if ever, equaled. Raphael studied in Perugia and had a successful career first in Florence. And then later in Rome where he was commissioned by Pope Julius II to decorate the Vatican apartments. His most famous works include his Vatican fresco, The School of Athens. 1510-1511, and his paintings of the Virgin and Child such as Madonna of the Meadow. Which also includes an image of the infant Saint John the Baptist. He painted one major mythological scene. Galatea, in 1512, as well as an influential portrait of Pope Julius II the same year. After the death of Bramante, he was called on as the architect of St. Peter's, though most of his designs were either never constructed, or were changed. Raphael died at age 37 and was buried in the Pantheon in Rome. Why was St. What is Donatello's David? Donatello Donato di Niccolo di Beto di Bardi, c. 
was considered a genius of the early Renaissance. He had a long career as a sculptor and is responsible for the famous Bronze David. The first life-size male nude sculpture made since antiquity. Donatello's David is surrounded in mystery art historians do not who the patron was, for example. Though it was placed in a courtyard at the Medici Palace home of the ruling family in Florence at the time. It is thought that the noble David symbolizes the recent Florentine military. Victory over neighboring city-state Milan, in 1428. In this piece. Donatello represents this Old Testament hero as a young, nude man in early adolescence. His hips are tilted in a confident contraposto pose and he stands. With knees slightly bent, over the dismembered head of his foe, Goliath. A large feather from Goliath's helmet can be seen reaching high up the inside of David's leg. Donatello's David is at once a reflection of the classical tradition of sculpture making. And an erotic depiction of youthful heroism. It is quite different from another famous David done by Michelangelo. What is Great Zimbabwe? Great Zimbabwe was an important capital city of the Bantu-speaking Shona people between the 12th and 15th centuries, reaching its peak between 1250 and 1450 with an estimated population of approximately 15,000 people and control over a large territory covering an area of nearly 2,000 acres, the ruined city of Great Zimbabwe is principally comprised of three structures, the hill complex, the valley ruins, and the great enclosure, which are surrounded by a large protective wall, nearly 30 feet tall. The great enclosure, which dates from the mid-14th to 15th century, was made with a special pattern of dry stone blocks, a technique still used by contemporary builders. And is the largest stone structure in sub Saharan Africa. Many sculpture and pottery fragments have been found at the Great Zimbabwe site, indicating a rich art culture. A popular material for sculpture was soapstone and many examples of soapstone bird carvings have been discovered. Though the exact significance of these sculptures is still unknown. What is the Great Mosque at Jin? Also referred to as the Great Friday Mosque at Jin. The Great Mosque is the largest mud brick structure in the world. At least three main incarnations of the mosque have existed, including an original mosque from the 13th century, and two major reconstructions in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The city of Jin, located in Mali, was a sophisticated urban and religious center by the 13th century due to its location along Saharan trade routes, and the expansion of Islam. The Great Mosque at Jin is characterized by its smooth beige walls constructed of sun-baked mud bricks, the bricks themselves were composed of clay and straw. 
as well as the many wooden poles that stick out from the walls. Due to the fragile nature of the mud bricks, the walls of the mosque are frequently rebuilt. And the wood supports allow workers to replaster the exterior. During a special annual festival in which the entire community participates. The grand design of the Great Mosque at Jin influenced. Islamic architecture in other parts of Africa, including the Sudan. Why were Botticelli's paintings burned? Sandro Botticelli, 1445-1510, was a Florentine painter who was quite frequently commissioned by the powerful Medici family often to produce secular mythological paintings such as The Birth of Venus, 1484-86, and Primavera, 1482. Now one of his most famous works. The Birth of Venus depicts the classical goddess of love and beauty as she is being born out of sea foam. She floats to shore atop a large scallop shell. Her hair blowing gently around her body, as she covers her nude body in modesty. She is propelled by the breath of the wind god, Zephyr, who holds his lover. Chloris, in his arms. Small, pink flowers float in the air. Venus is welcomed to shore by a follower who reaches out to cover her with a floral garment. This painting, like the rest of Botticelli's work, shows the artist's skill in using single-point perspective and using light to effectively model three-dimensional figures. It is also both erotic and secular. Things changed for Botticelli when a Dominican monk named Fra Girolamo Savonarola took power in Florence from 1494 to 1498. Savonarola gave powerful sermons in which he accused the city of Florence of being morally corrupt and materialistic. Swayed by Savonarola's conservative religious message, Botticelli burned many of his own paintings, especially his earlier more secular works. Botticelli's later work has a decidedly more religious tone. 